Wennington on the outskirts of Greater London, which you can see for yourselves, a major incident is being declared by the London Fire Brigade, uh, not yeah. just because of this incident in Wennington, but because of a number of fires starting right across the city and southern England is in these soaring temperatures. Uh, the record temperature for the UK has been broken today over 40 degrees centigrade. The UK uh, hit that new record, 40.3 to be precise, in Coningsby in Lincolnshire, and a temperature just uh, slightly below that was recorded at Heathrow Airport in West London. But uh, let's concentrate on this conflagration in uh, Wennington in Greater London. More than uh, 100 firefighters are battling this fire there and a large number of fire appliances as well. It appears to have started, well, some say in grassland, but uh, there are conflicting accounts. Uh, it's also been said it may have started in a scrapyard. This is, of course, the, the outskirts of London. Uh, some reports say it started uh, an explosion in a scrapyard and then has spread to the tinder-dry grassland, uh, setting fields ablaze. And uh, as you can see for yourself, that's a, a row of garages, it uh, seems, on fire. Several homes also, the previous shot we had for you, several homes have been destroyed and are still burning in the blaze. Uh, also a church. And it seems that uh, there are uh, a number of fires there burning throughout that area. Clearly, firefighters have been able to extinguish some of them, but uh, still a lot of work to do, it seems. Well, interestingly, London's actually one of the, the sort of greenest cities in, in Europe in terms of the amount of green space that there is, even in, even in central London. So you're right to point to the fact that the suburbs tend to have more grassland, more fields, more woodland. Uh, but actually, we do see significant areas of uh, green spaces in central London as well. So uh, at first, it may appear that, that wildfire and grassland fires in particular are not always a major issue for uh, urban brigades like London Fire Brigade. Actually, that's not the case. We do have significant um, areas of green uh, areas in central London and on the outskirts. So it's very much a clear and present threat for us to make sure that we're prepared and ready to respond to these incidents as and when they occur. So the situation is being brought under control. It still remains very, very dynamic because, um, as you can see in, in your pictures, where you've got areas that appear to be out, uh, they can reignite very, very quickly, particularly given uh, the very, very dry nature of the land that it's currently on. So uh, we are going to have our resources there for a significant period of time, making sure that we're turning over and damping down to prevent any further escalation of the, the incident and stopping any chance of a reignition, which is something that is a uh, real prevalence when you're dealing with these types of incidents because of the nature of the ground and its dried condition at the moment. Any small spark or any area that we do not put out properly could run the risk of reignition. So we will have resources there uh, throughout the night, making sure that we're bringing this incident under control uh, and required the full resource of the London Fire Brigade to be able to bring those incidents under control. These climate-related uh, challenges that we know we are now facing are things that we are for properly putting into our longer-term strategic planning to make sure that the brigade is as resourced and as prepared as it possibly can be to deal with these incidents as and when they occur. But the, the position that London finds itself in is that we have got well-rehearsed, well-practiced, multi-agency plans in place to deal with exactly this type of challenge when it's actually pan-London. Um, and actually, that's been brought to bear throughout today. And as I say, I would, I would just once again put credit towards our firefighters and officers and control staff and emergency service partners who have worked incredibly hard in extremely arduous conditions to bring these incidents under control. So we've not had formal reports on the number of casualties come through yet, because as you can see, this still remains a very dynamic uh, incident. So we're still waiting on the latest information as far as casualty numbers are concerned. What I can say is that we've got significant resource at the scene and bringing this incident under control as quickly as possible. But obviously, this will be subject uh, to a significant investigation to try and ascertain the cause of the fire. Um, but at the moment, uh, I'm unable to comment on any potential casualties. Well, thank you for that.